Navarre's France. For years, this majestic vista set deep in the middle of the French Alps has been the home to skiers from all over the world. But for the last two years, it has also become ground zero for a small group of bicyclists. Their goal, to go faster than anyone has ever gone before on a bicycle. Speed in excess of 100 miles per hour. The most amazing thing about this is that they're going over 100 miles an hour on a bicycle. I mean, people don't even go 100 miles an hour in their cars for the most part. The riders know you can't go over 100 miles per hour on just any bike. A world record depends on guts and science. What started as ordinary mountain bikes have been modified into $20,000 aerodynamic bullets. The frames were modeled after a ship's bow, then constructed of stronger yet lighter materials. The entire bike was coated with Teflon so that the air could slip by more easily. The tires were covered with metal studs to improve traction. Motorcycle disc brakes replaced ordinary bike brakes because at these incredible speeds, regular bike brakes would melt. The goal is to try and reach the highest speed possible without going too far, without going to extremes, uh, to listen to your bike, to your equipment, and to your physical capabilities. Riders accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in less than four seconds. That's two and a half times faster than an automobile. In 13 seconds, they cross the finish line, but the race isn't over yet. The rider's life is still in danger. Riders have less than 10 seconds to stop the bike, but they can't slam on the brakes. They have to gradually increase the pressure, being careful not to put the bike into a skid. It is an imperfect science at best. In March of 1996, Frenchman Eric Barone made history. He set a new world's record of 117 miles per hour on a bicycle. Now from the French Alps to the Big Apple, here's the incredible story of Dexter Benjamin, bike messenger. New York City may be the most congested city in the world. In the heart of the hustle and bustle, well over a thousand bike messengers negotiate the concrete canyons at breakneck speeds, earning an average of $125 a day. For the most part, they are ordinary people on ordinary bikes. But 32-year-old Dexter Benjamin is anything but ordinary. Born and raised in Trinidad, Dexter lost his right leg in a bike accident at the age of 21. But he still had a passion to ride, so he turned a negative into a positive. First, he modified his bike by flipping the chain and the gears from the right side to the left. Then, he removed the extra pedal. In a matter of months, he became so proficient at riding, he started his own bicycle messenger service. Well, from first it was hard because um, I was scared of the traffic. But then I started maneuvering myself because I didn't have this great amount of balance, you know. So by practicing myself to take different turns, it right now is not a problem because the traffic really don't bother me now. Every day, Dexter is on the streets by 7 a.m. At 9 a.m., he has a standing order to pick up an oversized loaf of bread at a downtown bakery. The bread has to be delivered over 80 blocks away to a midtown cafe. If the bakery were to use their car, it would take up to 40 minutes each way. It takes Dexter less than 20 minutes to beat the traffic and complete his run. How does this guy do it? He puts the crutches on the bike or... I just thought this is really, this is really cool. This is what you need to see when you think your life is tough. If you know that somebody cannot go in there with a bike, don't let me go in there with a bike. Don't treat me different, you know. I'm not handicapped or disabled or whatever. I'm just missing a leg, you know. And like he has every day for the past nine years, through rain, sleet, or snow, Dexter delivers. This is Jay Miron, 
a member of the Schwinn Bicycle Stunt Team. Jay is a three-time world champion and the 1995 Extreme Games jumping champion. Tonight, on our stage, Jay is going to go beyond extreme. Tell everybody what you're going to do. I'm going to throw a double back. For those of you who are not as well-versed in contemporary bike lingo as yours truly, I'll translate. <laughs> Jay is going to propel himself high enough to execute two complete backflips in midair then land on his wheels. Many extreme riders have tried, and to our knowledge, no one has ever made it. Jay, what are the dangers of what you're about to do? Well, obviously, as soon as you go upside down, there's the risk of breaking a neck. Uh, this is upside down two times, so it's two twice times. as dangerous. Well, good luck. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Take off. Thanks. Jay's extraordinary stunt doesn't begin here. It starts up there. In order for Jay to generate enough speed to complete the double back, he will have to use every inch of our studio, a diagonal distance equal to a 15-story building. Jay's designed a special two-story high ramp with a 65-degree vertical drop where Jay Spotter is standing right now. Jay will charge down from the top of the ramp through our audience, hopefully hitting our studio floor with enough velocity to vault himself 25 feet in the air off what riders call a box jump. A six foot high, 32 foot long structure that Jay has placed dead center in the middle of our studio. At the highest point of his jump, Jay will be less than five feet from the top of our studio. And that should give him enough time to complete the two back flips. Midway through the second flip, Jay must instantly calculate his height, speed, and position as he approaches the landing site. Now, if all goes well, his back tire will hit first, like an airplane, on the angled back side of the box jump. After landing, Jay will have just under 50 feet to regain control of his bicycle. For Jay to stop safely and to safeguard our audience in the event that something goes wrong, we place a 12-inch thick protective padding on the box jump, and we have emergency medical personnel standing by. All right, Jay, the stage is set. Good luck, and be careful. Oh, I'm fine. He's okay. Let's hear it for him. As you can see, just before committing to a second backflip, Jay bailed out 15 feet above our studio floor. He realized he did not have enough height to complete the revolution. And now, he will again attempt to perform the double back on our stage. Watch the TV. We're going to show an instant replay of this in slow motion. Uh, what do you think was going through your mind? First crank's important. I come down to the bottom. I get a good pump. Hit the crank hard. All right. As I'm going here, I'm thinking commit to two. Up in the air. I'm now feeling pretty good. I hit it with a lot of speed. My knees didn't buckle at all. Right here is the commitment period where you have to stay on. There's a bailout period right there, but I stayed through it. As you turn around now, the main focus is spotting the landing. 